when an Emerging Ireland tour is announced and it's confirmed that it will sort of bleed into into pros, including a Leinster Monster game in a few months' time. There is an element of debate that surrounds it, and yet we know that it was beneficial for a lot of the players who went the last time around. I'm wondering what your initial reaction was, James, once you caught wind of the fact that this was going to be happening. It's, it's very frustrating for provinces and fans um, when, obviously, players get pulled away for these sorts of things, but the, the reality of... Uh, of Irish rugby is that the, the main money generator is the Irish rugby team. So that takes priority. And as tough as that is for, for fans and supporters to to stomach when they're going to be losing out on, on individuals for interpro games, it's you kind of have to, you know, if we want to win a World Cup at some point, um and you know we we have to keep the uh the provinces afloat because unfortunately Fortunately, um, the majority of the provinces don't make money, so they do depend on the national team um, to, to be profitable. So all those kind of things tied in means that the, the importance of uh, the Emerging Ireland Tour and the Ireland Tour being uh, successful and live and, and breeding the next kind of um, cohort of, of players to feed into the, the national side is very important. Um, and and yeah, getting a big tour in like it's it's a it's a step up for a lot of the individuals that will go on the tour, and it's something that you know they'll look back on as a as a big part of their development in in playing for for Ireland in future years. In what sense is it a step up, James? To your mind, like what is the actual point of this? If you were a skeptic, how would you explain it to them? Versus an like an interpro game. Yeah, like as in, I guess, just given the caliber of opposition you're playing against, like some of the games last time around, they're they're easier games than you would play in the URC. So, what what's the value of it for a young player to grow? So it's the okay. You're you've been brought into camp, which again is something different to what you're used to uh, in your your day to day weeks. It, it's learning how to merge with whatever teams are thrown together. You're learning all of the, uh, you know, senior plays. Like they use the same playbooks. They have the same week plan. Um, there's the same level of expectation uh, of your your professionalism, which again has to be another step up from what you're used to at home. Um, and and the understanding of the level of preparation that goes into an international uh, game, even though, as you said, the uh, opposition might not necessarily be. Um, you know, always uh, top notch, but it's it's everything that goes on off the field. Uh, is, is what you're kind of pre- preparing for, as well as you know, getting used to playing with people that you're you don't necessarily see every week and uh, or playing in in a system that you're not playing in every week. So all those different elements, and uh, ideally you're playing against better teams. But if you're not, then it, it's just the uh, the bits I talked about there is is what is important. It's a little bit of a dry run as well, Murph, for Simon Easterby ahead of that Lions year, in which Andy Farrell won't be involved. You were going to come in there anyway. Sorry, I interrupted you. Not at all. It is a big part of that. It is a big part. He gets another chance to lead the team, and our expectation is that he will take over from Farrell and be the temporary head coach while Farrell is on Lions duty. So it's good for him to get that time in the saddle again as a head coach. That is a, p- a part of it. And all of the players who I've spoken with who went in 2022, they do speak highly of that time with the national coaching staff. Andy Farrell didn't travel, obviously, last time. And you presume it will be the same here. But say someone like Jack Crowley got a lot of time with Mike Cash, working attacking reps, understanding the system. So therefore, when he got kind of catapulted in, in November, pretty soon after that, off the bench against Fiji and starting against Australia at a late stage, he certainly would have had a better understanding or an accelerated understanding of what he needed to do in that team on both sides of the ball with the kicking game, with, with everything. Other players like Calvin Nash, Joe McCarthy, Tom Ahern went on that tour and and they've gone on with, with Ireland as well. I suppose my thing is that they those players I mentioned probably would have gone on with Ireland anyway, in my mind. They may have been home playing really good games for their province, actually, instead of being on tour. But so so it's kind of hard to quantify. It really is. Like those high potential players definitely will make it through regardless of an emerging Ireland tour. But is it helpful to be around the Ireland coaching staff? Is it helpful for Joe McCarthy to spend that time with Paul O'Connell, doing line out meetings, getting an understanding of what he wants around the breakdown? It, it absolutely is. It makes a lot of sense in that regard. The timing is the issue, of course. 
it's literally the start of the season. The problems have just done preseason. They're ready to go. You need to get a good start in the URC now because, as we've seen again this season, it's it's so tight. So that timing isn't ideal. But this is one that's kind of fallen into the RFU's lap as it did in the first instance. It's a Toyota challenge. Like they're the sponsors of the Cheetah. They're the ones who are driving this. The Cheetahs want to bring rugby to their home stadium, the Toyota Stadium in Bloemfontein. My understanding is it's financially very affordable for the teams who travel for this. So you're not having a massive outlay, say that it would cost to get a Six Nations A up and running. You know what I mean? That would be a very expensive endeavour if the RFU were the ones to push that or bring them on a tour where there's no one welcoming you with opening arms and paying for whatever the the hotels or accommodation. I'm not sure exactly what, but but it's certainly more affordable in that regard. So it's kind of a coming together of the RFU wanting to have players into the national, senior national environment a little bit earlier and this being, um, I suppose, available in the calendar. So it, it is frustrating again, I'm sure, for the, for the provinces. I just hope there's no... I just hope I don't. we don't see anyone who is in the first choice 23 of their province on this tour because I think that is that is not what it should be about. Um, you know, the, the the kind of line they're pushing is this accessing game time. So it should be that player who who is really high potential, has come out of the 20s and is maybe going to struggle for minutes in the provinces because, as we've mentioned so many times, it's such a tough and tight funnel to get through to, to play those senior reps for your, your team. So... Um, I'm kind of still in two minds about it. I, I don't think it'll ever be possible to say that tour is the reason that these guys got through. That just isn't the case in my mind, but I definitely think it is helpful at the same time. You could understand the frustrations of Monster, Connacht, and Ulster in particular, Murray, in the sense that it's been dictated to them to some extent, maybe not in writing, but in heavy implication that they need to reduce their squads for next season. And suddenly you're bringing down players to face injury risk that wouldn't otherwise be there and like as you say the urc at the start of the season is equally important as the urc at the end of the season ultimately it's four or five match points available on a given weekend it doesn't matter if it's the opening weekend or the final weekend of regular season games so you know like i suppose it as you say like you just fully understand the frustration if it is there among fans or even among any of the provinces leinster included but there are undeniable benefits here as well and it's I mean, you can toss a coin really as to which side you come down on, right? I, I sense it's a little less maybe this time around. And the thing is, like James mentioned it, the RFU, like Irish rugby is the RFU. They they run it all. And unfortunately, part of the deal is that some of the stuff they do is going to piss you off as a province. You're just, you're part of the organization. That happens in every single company in the world. Certain departments are pissed off with certain decisions higher up the chain. But the people higher up the chain think this is the best way to get a, a result for the, the company overall. And and that's the, the case here. Like, yeah, I think the first time around it was probably badly handled and badly communicated and felt like it was just sprung on everyone. But this one's been in the workings for quite a while. There's been a lot of mutterings about it. So people have had a chance to to get to grips with it. The the previous time there was a bit of negotiation around players. Some guys who were gonna go uh, and provisionally in the squad didn't go because the province say their case. So you'd hope again that would be part of it. Um I also think it's good that the coaching staff of the national team are put to use more regularly like there's these periods where they're not hands-on with players uh, away from the big campaigns and that's always been a curious factor of it I know they're working hard away from camps as well but it's good for them to continue to get their coaching reps in and I think that this layer of international rugby I actually think it is quite important yeah it's it's not ideal with the, with the timing in this instance but I actually would love to see more a international say during the Six Nations or a, or a tour of, of that nature Obviously, next summer during the Lions, there's going to be a, an Irish squad of this kind of caliber or this slant, I guess, because you'll probably have a lot of guys on the Lions tour. So that's exciting. But I think it would be cool to see more Ireland A or Wolfhounds or emerging, whatever they want to put the, the tag on it and see those internationals being played. And again, you have to weigh up the cost involved in that. And you certainly won't be making money from that. But I think you'll be getting good development into players at times when the problems aren't playing. <laughs>